Hey guys, um, I'm Nostash Kenjigi and I'm with Just Badding. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another episode of Just Bate. It's a Sunday, so you guys know what we do already. We talk about stories and experiences that hopefully inspire you because they definitely inspire us and topics that we are passionate about and genuinely love. My name is Ashwin. We have a special guest with us, but before that, Pratip, how are you, man? How's everything going? It's a Sunday morning. Yeah, Sunday morning, everything's going good. And we have with us a very special guest. He's, he was born in the United States, moved to India, played cricket there, went back to the US, played some more cricket, played international cricket. We have with us Nosh Kenji. How's it going, man? Good, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming in. Before we get into your cricketing journey and talk about your experience in life, we have heard that your favorite cricketer was Rahul Dravid. Now, I want to ask you what about him intrigued you and have you tried to emulate anything that you've learned from him? Yeah, so I play a lot of cricket in Bangalore. Um, like you just said, all my formation, my formative years, about 10-15 years I've played in Bangalore and at that point, there were times when he was the Indian captain. I think this was way back in 20, 2005 or 2010. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was the Indian captain, but then when he wasn't playing for India, he would come back, he would play for the second division club to get it promoted. Yeah. Um, and at that point, you could see his commitment. It would be a hot Saturday afternoon, but he would still be feeding his lips when he didn't have to. He could just bat and just sit down. But the kind of commitment that he had, had for the game, the way he just carried himself off the ground. I mean, yeah, he scored a lot of runs. He scored 10, 15,000 runs. But nobody remembers the numbers. If you, if mm-hmm. I ask you how many hundreds yeah. he got. Mm-hmm. No. I think it's what he did to people, how he inspired people, the way he just carried himself without any controversies. That, that actually, um, that's one which I admire more than anything else. I wasn't a batsman, but even to watch him bat, I would right. get up at 3 a.m. 6am when he was playing in Australia, so that's one small part of the game, but mostly it's outside the field. Yeah. So, I think even we can agree, in, he, he's also coached me briefly and for that period, like I was really awestruck with just how he went about things, very nonchalant and very just calm and composed all the time. So yeah, you spoke about your formative years in Bangalore itself. So could you tell us how you got into cricket and what was it like in Bangalore? Um, yeah, so I'm from Chikmangla. Um, it's about seven hours from Bangalore. And my father, actually my parents, they were very supportive in me playing cricket. Um, I was blessed to, you know, just be playing cricket all the time. Um, so. Chikmangalore, it wasn't, it didn't have any coaching centers or anything like that mm-hmm. at that point. And Bangalore was huge for cricket. So when I turned eight, my dad said, if you want to get serious in cricket, then Bangalore is the place to be. And at that point, there was a cricket ground in, um, I think it was called Webster Ground. Um, hey. KFC, yeah. very fun. I had this camp there. Um, so it was summer in 99, it was 98, 99. And we said, all right, it's time to get into serious cricket. I was playing a lot of cricket in, in the backyards, playing with tennis ball. But then my serious cricket started in Bangalore. Um, and then I went to school in Uti. I didn't study in Bangalore. So even in Uti, the school that I went to, it had a good cricketing program. So when I was in school, I would play there. And then when I had holidays, I would play in Bangalore. So that, that was my schooling days. And then... When I moved to college, um, I got to play a lot of club cricket and the zonals and I didn't play state, so zonals I played in Bangalore, yeah. You talk about how you, your dad decided that you wanted to get into serious cricket when you were 8 years old. So were you sure back then that cricket is something you wanted to do or was it something you picked up for fun? Uh, I think looking back at it now, I don't think, I mean there's no way I would have guessed that. Um, I would be doing things that I'm doing now. I think at that point, it was just me enjoying cricket more than anything else. Like anytime I was on the cricket field, it was just nothing else mattered in the world. Like anybody now, you see any kids playing now, even now when I look at kids, I'm like, wow, they don't care about anything else. You just express yourself. You're just being you, you do well, you enjoy it. It was the same for me. Um, like any kid at that point, I think even I, if anybody asked me what I wanted to be, I would have said 
a cricketer. Um, yeah. I think a cricketer, Indian cricketer too. <laughs> but then, you know, at that point, I wouldn't have guessed that I would move to the US and then mm-hmm. play for the national team. Yeah, so it's just been a dream. Yeah. Now, I think that's a good segue to my next question too. But did you ever think that you would go back to the states, like? Around when you were 20 years old, did you make up a plan of going back to the states and playing cricket there? What was that like? What was the transition of going back to the states and getting back into cricket? Um, so it's a funny story. So when I was 23, until 20, when I until I turned 23, it was just cricket studies. My dad made sure that I was also serious about studies because that was my black backup plan. So I would just play and study, play and study. And by the time I reached 23, 24, you know how it is, um, the the opportunities, they just stop. I wouldn't say they stop, but there aren't as many opportunities as when you're a 15 or 17 year old. So, and at that point, I think I'd given it all, all that I'd got. There were no regrets at that point. I said, all right, I've given it my all for 15, 20 years. Um, I've played how much I can. Now it's time to get into my backup plan of working in the US. I knew I could come to the US and start working because I was born here. So I did my master's there in Bangalore and I came to the US with the intention of just working. I didn't want to play cricket anymore. Oh, wow. At that point I was yeah. <laughs> At that point I was I just told myself I'm done. Like I'm bold enough. I spent <laughs> enough time. Let me just do something else. Um it's funny, yeah. Once I came here it I didn't play cricket for a year close to a year, um, like anybody who is in the US or in Bangalore, you, you come to a new country, you have so many mm. things to do. But somehow I think just cricket just pulled me back. I think I'm blessed in that way too. That's interesting and I think, yeah, you spoke about how you didn't play for a year. Then how did you get back into cricket? Was it through clubs there or what was the scene there? Um, so at that point in 2016, I, um, in 2016, so until 2015, from 2010 or 11, uh, USA cricket was suspended from ICC. They couldn't participate in ICC um, events because there was there were some problems with the board, and then they got suspended. And in 2015, they wanted to reform the team, so they went around the country looking for players. So they would have combines, which is equivalent to the zonals and all right, state. Mm-hmm. yeah. And at that point, um, I just said, I've played cricket all this time and I've played it because I've enjoyed it <laughs> and there's nothing to lose. So I thought I'll give it a shot and I guess it was all the effort that I put in in India that just paid off. Like when you learn something, even though you don't play for a year or two, it's always with you because it's yeah. a skill that you've done day in, day out. So I just got into my basics again and then the combines, I was in New York at that point. so. The combines came to New York. I did well in the combines. Um, one step led to another. Suddenly, I found myself in the 30-man squad. At that point, it was unreal. I called up my dad. I told him this. <laughs> he couldn't believe. Uh, it was it was early in the morning. I think it was 4:30 in the morning in India. I hadn't even told him I'd gone for selection because because of all the you know the frustration. Not the fr- I wouldn't say frustration. The upset. I was upset over me not getting selected in the under 17, right. 19, mm-hmm. so I didn't want them to feel any um, disappointment. So I didn't even tell them I'd gone for selections. So once I told him I'd made it to the 30, that was a six to eight month process where it was a 30 month squad. Before that, there was a pre-trial, all that. He couldn't believe it. And then at that point I said, well, it's now or never. So mm-hmm. I took it real serious from there. And then um, the following year, I made my debut. Yeah, so that's going to be the next question too. How was your debut? So how are your people back home feeling back in India? How was how are you feeling? Because it's quite a journey, right? You moved to the US in your early 20s and then now you're playing international cricket for real. How 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 was that feeling? It's unreal. Um, like I said, like if somebody told me that I'd be playing for USA cricket team, even five, six years ago, I would have laughed. I said, just stop making jokes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, um, it's hard to put it into words because that is what you dream of playing. Well, I, I would have loved to play in India, but everything happens for good. And the um, debut, I actually made my debut um, in Uganda. So, mm-hmm. we had, so here how it works is 
the the teams which are ranked from 15 to 20 play right. together then right. you beat the teams which are ranked between 15 to 20 you move up and you even they want to get to top 10 or top 12 mm-hmm. so that you play the world cup mm-hmm. so i was playing in division 3 we played in uganda um against good teams it was so most of the guys that i played with i'd seen them so when i was in bangalore i followed briefly followed usa cricket when they played australia in the world cup right in the yeah, world right. cup they played in a champions trophy yeah. in 2004 mm-hmm. and at that point my dad was telling me i could be playing there one day but it was <laughs> <laughs> it laughed it off <laughs> oh wow <laughs> okay let's see <laughs> so and then there were a few guys from that 2004 squad here in the in the trials as coaches oh. so i got to meet them and yeah i was just telling them them that as well but yeah it's um it's hard to put into words i mean i'm just blessed and grateful that i've got the opportunity to do so yeah that would have been you know like i can't properly relate but i can imagine how you must be feeling right now especially after you quit cricket and then got back and yeah. again touching upon the system in usa in terms of cricket could you just tell us a little bit about how it is there and in what ways it may be different from a system in um sure so once the icc took over so right now the icc is um looking after all the operations in terms of off the field and on off, on the field too so they're bringing in the coaches they have a proper system and there is a third party it's called um, ace ace ventures so mm-hmm. they are actually funding usa cricket right now so we just got odi status last year which was huge um mm-hmm. so we have central contracts from the icc and usa cricket too so it's all looking upward now we want to get into the world cup in that's going to happen in india so that's the next focus and in terms of domestic structure um so there's a lot of cricket played in different patches of the country um if if you have if you haven't been to the us and seen the cricket here you would feel i you wouldn't know the amount of cricket that's being played here um there's a lot of indian crowd there's a lot of caribbean people from jamaica barbados antigua and then all the asian countries to sri lankans pakistanis and there's massive cricket in certain parts so if you go to the west east and then mm-hmm. also south in texas and surrounding areas and it's a structure where you play for your club teams and then if you do well you get a chance to play in these um um selections there's so now they've come up with the circuit where there's nationals very similar to how it's in india like yeah. zonal state mm-hmm. so you play for your minor league team which is your state side mm-hmm. yeah. and then you play the national which is the region so there are eight regions oh. okay so you play you, you play well in the region that's when you make it to the national squad of 45 and mm-hmm. then the 45 play matches there's camps and then you make it to the team so that's the structure yeah that's that's very similar to how every country is there now and that's great i think i'm quite surprised but very happy that a lot of cricket is played in america but taking a step back you also said that you went to the states to work and right. before when you started playing cricket or even international cricket did you have to balance it out how was it practicing and working or how did you go about it yeah so right now since we have the odi status right now we have central contract so but when i started initially when i made my debut at that point we didn't have um odi status which meant we weren't given contracts so that's that's something which i had to balance out um it wasn't easy in the beginning because you still had to get to work and then look after your practice your training you still had to do all the work that's given by your trainer so it wasn't easy but i think when you want something bad enough you just find the time to do it um you can either be giving excuses and saying you can't do it or you can just do it and at that point i think i was i was too involved um looking back at it now i think more than work i just make sure this this was always the dream for me my parents couldn't have been any happier so i said this was what i needed and i just focused on what i wanted yeah, and we are there so that's great now 
Yeah, so on those lines itself, can you tell us about your first international experience? So first international oh. experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. The so we we toured to Uganda. Um, okay. We we got to play Oman. So my debut game was against Oman, mm-hmm. and I had watched I had watched Oman play in the World Cup when I was in India. Right. Uh, oh. I think played a twenty twenty World Cup. Yeah. Right, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. Mm-hmm. So I, I recognized a few guys. I'd seen them. Obviously, you do your homework. There are a lot of video sessions, and it was unreal. Like it, it was just happening so quick. And now I look back at some of the photos that were clicked from those games, the videos. It's kind of a blur. Like I remember before the game, I was standing. I told my captain. So Ibrahim was the captain back then. Um, he's played for Hyderabad. He mm-hmm. he's played in the ICL too. Um, I told him. I would have never thought of like it was unreal, and then I remember him telling me, "Just enjoy it." I mean, not everybody to experience it. Yeah, just yeah. live in the moment and just ex- and just live it. Um, it went by quick. Uh, yeah, <laughs> even I think I had a eight or a nine over spell, but I can't. I, it was just one wicket, but it was just too unreal. And then the second game onwards, it was back to you know just enjoying it. I was actually enjoying bowling. There wasn't a lot of. Now was bugs in my stomach, so yeah. Um, couldn't have asked for anything more. Did you have any nervous and, phone calls before the match from your dad or after the match that you had to make? Um. So usually I try to. Yeah. So my dad, my parents actually follow all the games online and through through the internet. And I don't think those games were telecasted, but. Um, they were following the scores. They were coming okay. before, before we came here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd spoken to them um, even after the games. They were so happy for me. And um, there were times when they've come and watched few games as well. They actually follow my cricket closely. Um, oh. mm-hmm. Then yeah, so they were there in Dubai when we played UAE and Scotland, and they oh, wouldn't right. play against me mm-hmm. too. Um, so the, that that is why I mean. They've given so much of support to me during all these twenty twenty five years, and I just feel happy for them too. It's for them. Yeah. And now, uh, touching a bit upon your bowling, I know that you're a left arm spinner. So, do you focus more on say a technical aspect in spin bowling, or are you more of a maybe it feels good out of the hand on a certain day, so I'm going to stick to that kind of play? Um, for me, I think it's about. For me, the confidence comes from being prepared before the game. If mm-hmm. if I've done my skill work and I've put in enough repetitions before the series or a tour, I'm confident. Then I just go out there and do it well. So for me, the confidence comes from my preparation. Um, more than the technical aspect, I think I try to keep keep it simple. There are few things that I know that if I just do this, then I'm bowling well. It helps me bowl well, and. When you're in the heat of the battle, I don't think about technical things at all. Um, maybe in practice, it's about training those skills or working on few technical things. But when you're in a game, it's all about just trusting those skills that you've got. So technically, um, there are few things I'll. Uh, I just want to be. There are two, three points that like, if if I'm bowling well, I know I'm. Balance of the trees, mm-hmm. and more than technical, I think it's the mental work. Um, mm-hmm. If I'm thinking well, if I'm positive, if I'm confident that way, and then I'm just bowling well. So I think it's more about maintaining your mental shape correctly than than your technical. It's quite yeah, interesting to say that. Brother, go on, go on, brother, go on. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying that I think lots of people they really don't give the mental aspect as much importance. Whereas that is what gets you to the top, right? Because the skill set is going to be there. After that, the differentiating factor is just how mentally strong you are. So, like, yeah, that's spot on. Yeah, because like you said, everybody has the skill. When you're right. playing at a certain level, everybody can bowl. Mm-hmm. Everybody can spin the ball. But what's going to separate you is how you come back after you get hit, right. or how strong you can stay when others don't believe in you. It's that belief. Right. I think there are times when when I've done extremely well. It's just that I've believed in myself more than anybody believing in me. Mm-hmm. I think it just creates that magic. Um, 
even when i'm in bangalore when i'm in kos yeah i'm not sure if, yeah oh yeah we were yeah. kos kids a few years ago oh you guys yeah okay <laughs> yeah so kos has been my home ground for what 20 years now that's where i've trained mm-hmm. all the time and youngsters come up to me and they ask about technique how i should hold the bat ball how much how should i be spinning it more but i think after a certain point it's all about mental skills it's a battle in the middle where you're thinking you're you're competing against a batsman mm. if you're competing right. against yourself by thinking you're you're releasing the ball late your head is here your shoulders there you're not driving through then you're competing against yourself so how are you going to beat the batsman right so i just try to say yes technique is good you need to get it correct and then it's about repetition to repetitions that's why i think quality and quantity is both important that that makes so much sense because pratib here is a raw spinner he's an all rounder but predominantly a spinner and i'm seeing him work his ass off just bowling again and again and again but talking about the mental aspect i want to know how you keep your mental how you, your mind in shape because i am someone who thinks a lot about my game off the field and sometimes that's that gets to me so i use someone who thinks a lot about cricket the game like to talk about the sport off the field or do you switch off do you have that switch off the second you get off the field that's a great question man um if you ask my teammates they would say i'm thinking about cricket all the time <laughs> <laughs> it's um yeah it's it, i think i'm very similar to you in ways that if if after a game you find you see me i'm still thinking about what happened Mm-hmm. how i could have done better what did i learn um how could i have that's the main thing i look at what what did i learn what could i have done better what will i do the next time if i'm in a similar situation but i think mm-hmm. after you play a certain number of games and as you progress you realize that what's happened is happened right. all you can do is learn from what happened and then move on mm-hmm. if if you mess something up you just learn you just see what went wrong you learn from it and then forget it right i think it's a balance too um when you do well we tend to be over the moon i don't see that as a problem i mean if i'm doing well then i'm reading all the newspapers and I'm, i'm looking at people, <laughs> what people write about me yeah but when that's I'm fair. doing well i just try to make sure that i don't see nothing <laughs> mm-hmm. that's <laughs> people have to say what they want and you're playing the game because you enjoy the sport mm-hmm. they can have their opinion end of the day it's about you right like you you train day in day out for yourself and if yeah. you don't do well it happens it's a sport ultimately there are 22 people fighting every day in the same ground and some days yeah. you're bound not to do well i mean you can't win each day there are more mm. failures than success so it's just about i think i've started to realize that if you don't do well just learn from it and be a better person from that experience for the next time i think that's an incredible way to look at it and it also keeps you motivated to every match to perform but when you talked about how you don't read about what others say and don't read the newspapers and don't go through the social media are you someone who gets affected by others what they tell talk about you or even if it's your dad or parents like are you affected by what maybe the negative things or criticism that comes your way uh-huh. Yeah, I'll be lying if I said no. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I I can I can look at it and pretend like I didn't I don't care about what somebody says, but when somebody is telling something about you and you read it, it just hit, hits at you at the wrong times. So when you're doing well, there's nothing that can stop you. You're just the momentum is there, you're right. You're in the zone. You're bowling well, but there are times when you're not doing well. That's when the doubts creep in and then suddenly you you start to think about what somebody wrote what somebody said what were they thinking what is that fellow thinking about me so yeah. i mean it's a fine balance um in times like these where there's so much social media and everybody's on the net everybody has a keyboard mm-hmm. you can you can't stop them from writing anything but you can stop yourself i think it's a powerful tool but at the same time you got to realize what's good for you and what's not good for you and that's going to be the key for anybody who's a youngster yeah that's a nice way to put it i mean it's only yeah, at the end of the day we are all humans so we definitely bound to get affected right now or talking about maybe your personal goals as a cricketer and as a team for the us what do you have coming up and i mean how do you plan to go about 
um so i'm kind of person who just looks at it day by day um there have been times when i've set goals for myself and when when i didn't achieve those goals um i didn't enjoy going back at it and seeing how it went through so for me right now it's just each day i try to do my best in whatever department whatever i work on and when i put my head to bed i just know i work my ass off that particular day mm-hmm. and um and then if the results don't come it's there's nothing i can do mm-hmm. for me it's about pro, uh, process more than the results and it's worked i would say it's fairly worked in my favor when i've just focused on what needs to be done rather than what i um rather than just focusing on okay that day this day um but in a long term i would say like i said we are looking to play the world cup so that'll be a huge um huge thing for me because we we'll, we are coming up, the world cup is in india too so yeah, right. i can't ask for anything more um mm-hmm. if i can get to play in front of my friends family that's where i played all my cricket so mm-hmm. that's the next goal i think there's a world cup in india and one in australia in the next two years so it's very exciting in this part um do well in the world cup and then they want to include cricket in the olympics too so if we can get yeah. to the olympics that'll be massive as well that'll be fantastic and, yeah yeah that, that'll be good for cricket because mm-hmm. right now it's just 10 12 countries playing and then the rest of the associate teams are not in the same level as the top level 10 10 10 12 teams so that'll help just spread cricket more in in, in the world scenario yeah if if i'm not wrong you i think i'm just assuming here because i looked it up online you also have the orti cup coming up against canada is is that, that yeah right and that's been a prestigious tournament that you guys have had between the two nations and you guys are going to play after four years if i'm not wrong so what yeah. makes that tournament so prestigious because i was looking up i was looking this up online and we were both shocked because apparently it's the longest it run tournament cool. yeah cricket yeah. tournament that there has been it's been run from around 1854 or something if i'm not wrong but what makes the competition between canada and america so special you guys are well read man you guys know your stuff yeah <laughs> <laughs> the first international tournament um so uh, so usa played canada that was the first international cricket tournament i think it was in 1844 mm-hmm. um this is more like so how it's ashes for england and australia right, right. Yeah. this in here for in the north america so it's something that's going on for years now and the last time we played it was 2 3 years ago uh, where we beat them so there's huge rivalry here because we're the top two teams here in the north american mm-hmm. region apart from west indies there's always banter there's the some of the guys come over to play here in the us the local tournaments we play together but then when they cross the border over oh, it's just it's just heat yeah <laughs> that's that's great i think the story that you've had and so much that we've read about you it inspires us too i mean we don't play cricket professionally anymore but the fact that you made it and you're now playing for your international country is just fantastic it's inspiring for a lot of kids out there it's inspiring to a lot of friends that we know that we spoke about before before we end this process do you have anything to ask no that's about it from my side it was really nice having you on and yeah i think some of the anecdotes that you shared with us were really inspiring and just your outlook on like preparation and cricket and everything that's around it was really nice to hear yeah thank you yeah, so thank much you. Um, yeah thank you for having me um i would just say yeah i know um i've just been blessed to play cricket here um but i never focused on anything else when i played cricket it was just for the love of the game yeah. the passion mm-hmm. um and it's just hard work and just persistence if 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 there are guys if there are youngsters who are watching your show i would just say just persistence that dedication and passion will take you a long way um you don't need special skills everybody has the skills it's just about how you believe in yourself and just keep going forward despite getting knocked down just make sure you don't get knocked down just keep getting up what a way to end this i mean i hope people understand you and understand that message because i think it's important and the smile on your face when you talk about the game shows how much passion you have for the game and i think that's just incredible
So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for watching us. Hey, so you did make it this far. That's great for one, but yeah, that ended a bit suddenly, didn't it? We were we took a lot of us time and we realized that, so we had to end it short. But here's the thing: you did make it this far, and I we really hope you enjoyed it. So please like, share, and subscribe. We'll have a lot more content like this every Sunday. So a lot of podcasts with a lot of guests, a lot of exciting guests that's to come, and quizzes, discussions, reactions every Wednesday. Mostly about cricket. For now, it's about cricket, but we'll get into a lot more in the future, hopefully. But yeah, like I said, like, share, and subscribe. Keep supporting us. See ya. Peace.